How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to get NordVPN to work while playing Call of Duty, whether you're using it to avoid skill-based matchmaking, improve your ping, or avoid getting DDoS'd. I'll be explaining how to do this step by step, so it's very easy to follow along, and I'll also go through some of the features that you might find pretty useful even outside of COD and gaming in general. And of course, if you'd like to check out NordVPN for yourself, you'll find links to pricing and discounts as well as full reviews in the description down below. Okay, so first things first, regardless of what you're using NordVPN for, I highly recommend you go to your settings and change your protocol to Nordlinks, as it's Nord's best performing protocol, and it's what makes Nord arguably the fastest VPN out there. And so whether you're trying to avoid skill-based matchmaking, improve your ping, or avoid getting DDoS, Nordlinks will make sure you have the best ping possible. That said, if you happen to run into any Nord server that's not compatible with Nordlinks, which is very rare by the way, you can change it back to auto and let Nord decide which protocol is better based on your situation. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's kick this off with how to avoid skill-based matchmaking. Basically speaking, whenever a Call of Duty lobby does not have enough players, it replaces the rest of the open slots with bots. And to gain access to these lobbies, all you really need to do with NordVPN is figure out which country has the least active COD players. Connect to a VPN server in that country, change your Steam download region to match the VPN, and then restart Steam. Now, I'm aware that there are some services out there that, on paper, offer the same thing, such as Lobby God and No Lag VPN. However, there are a few issues with these lobby services that most people don't know about. For starters, lobby services are very limited when it comes to countries, and with many sweaty players flocking to them, these easy lobbies they promise you are going to be filled with service users instead of bots. Now, I'm not saying there is a 100% guarantee that NordVPN will give you access to easy lobbies, but compared to the 10 or so countries lobby services have, Nord offers over 6,200 servers in 111 countries. And with this many locations, let's say you connected to Egypt and it did not work out, you can simply try any of the other 110 countries until you find one with few active players. And another thing about these lobby services is that they usually cost between $8 to $10 a month, and the only thing you get to do with them is access different COD lobbies. Nord, on the other hand, costs about $4, allows you to access easier bot lobbies, and you can also use it to access different streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, and HBO Max, as well as protect your data from your ISP, government, or anyone else trying to snoop on you. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention, most of these lobby services use fresh newbie accounts that are guaranteed to be paired with new players due to skill-based matchmaking to show you that their services can guarantee easy lobbies when it's in fact not the case. And so, using something like NordVPN for Call of Duty instead of lobby sites will give you a lot more value at a much cheaper cost. Now, besides getting easier COD lobbies, you can also use NordVPN to improve your overall ping. And this doesn't just apply to Call of Duty, but pretty much any online Steam game. But before I get into the nitty gritty of how that works, I want to quickly point out that the reason why you're getting high ping in the first place almost always goes back to your ISP. You see, ISPs don't really like it when you engage in high bandwidth activities like gaming or streaming so they throttle your connection to the ground. NordVPN, however, by connecting to a VPN server, all of your activity will be encrypted and hidden from your ISP or anyone else trying to snoop on you. So basically, they won't be able to throttle your connection. Another thing that ISPs do that affect your ping is that they use longer and cheaper routes to transmit data between you and the game server so that they can cut costs. And the longer these routes get, the slower your internet connection is gonna be. To give you an example, when I used to have high ping, I inspected my network and found out that my ISP was using a route that goes from Europe, passes through New York for some reason, and then goes back to Europe where my game server is located. Now, to fix this, all you really need to do here is look up the list of Call of Duty servers, find the game server you're connected to, which is usually the closest game server to you, and then connect to a VPN server that's close to the game server. By doing this, you'll be forcing your data to go in a straight line directly to the game server instead of the longer route your ISP uses. And this would drop your ping by a noticeable margin. For example, I play on the Call of Duty Madrid server, so I'll just boot up NordVPN, click on VPN on the side menu, click on More Connection Options, type Madrid in the search bar, and connect to the server that pops up. Then I'll go to Steam, change my Steam download region, and then give the client a quick restart. Once the client is back on, I can open Call of Duty, and my ping should be noticeably lower. Now as far as avoiding DDoS attacks, you can use the same exact method I just showed you, and you should be good to go. You see, the way DDoS attacks work is by malicious actors using IP sniffers to get a hold of your IP address, and then flooding your network with huge amounts of data, so you'll practically be disconnected from everything. However, by connecting to a VPN server, your IP address would be masked by that of the VPN. VPN, so these cheaters won't be able to target you with such attacks since they don't know your real IP. Alright, now that we've covered pretty much everything Nord can do to improve your Call of Duty experience, let's 
talk a little bit about some of the other bonus features that you get with Nord. Oh, and I won't go into details to avoid making this video longer than it already is, so if you want to know more about Nord, you'll find an in-depth review linked in the description down below. For starters, Nord is one of the most consistent VPNs when it comes to accessing streaming services due to their obfuscated servers. And with their huge list of 111 countries, you can access almost all streaming services and libraries from around the world. Now, as far as security goes, Nord has a feature called Threat Protection, which acts as a mini antivirus as it blocks ads, trackers, and malicious pop-ups while you're browsing the internet. And it also scans your downloads and apps for malware and notifies you whenever action is needed. Besides that, you also get the Dark Web Monitor, which scans the dark web for any of your sensitive data, such as your phone number and email address. And it notifies you about these instances immediately so that you can take action before it gets out of hand. And last but not least, we have the MeshNet feature, which allows you to send and receive files over the secure network of Nord. And I was also pleasantly shocked when I found out that you can host LAN parties using this feature, which is definitely a great plus. Now, this is pretty much everything Nord has to offer. Again, if you want to know more about Nord, you'll find an in-depth review in the description down below. And that'll be all for today's video. Hope these tips and tricks will help improve your Call of Duty experience. Thank you so much for watching. And again, don't forget to use the link in the description to grab yourself the best Nord discount possible. And check out the full review as well if you want to know more about this VPN. Besides that, like and subscribe to see more of these videos. Let me know in the comments if there's anything cybersecurity you'd like me to cover. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.